I've got an interesting repair to do on this bamboo backed U. I made it five years ago for my mate JT. I can't remember the exact draw weight, but it's over a hundred pound at 32. And it's one of those bows that's it was made out of odds and sods and some dodgy U and it's had a variety of repairs. I think it's had a new back because the bamboo splintered and then I used a batch of bad glue on it so the, the back had to be re-glued then there was a crack in the riser section that had to be redone and reinforced there's loads of stuff on we blog about it uh, but it crack started opening up again and it's not the glue line but it was going through the riser down into the core wood here and my mate just assumed it was going to be firewood. But I said, well, leave it with me and I'll have a tinker and see if I can do something with it. Because it's a nice workhorse of a bow for roving. But I don't know if you can see that it dips slightly there. I think there's a node on the bamboo. And so that's probably a bit of a weak point. So the game plan is take off all the riser down to good clean wood, flatten an area out to about here, stick on a nice bit of U about three or four millimetres thick and give a much gentler blend into the fades. So you can see what I did first off, I just ran it through the bandsaw and chopped off the oh, chopped off the visor. Oh yeah I know what that was. The, the riser had split before because I'd made it out of what I thought was nice walnut but it was just some old bit of a tabletop that had split. So this was edge grain ash to give it a bit more strength and stiffness. Bound and glued. Well it didn't go there, it went somewhere else. But like I say it's not the riser, it's split down into parent wood. Well, we'll get all this off, get it down flat, and we'll follow along with the full repair. I'm gradually rasping down the old riser, and it's exposing the extent of the split. But if I can get that all off, and get down to good clean wood, I can flex it slightly to open up this gap, get a load of low viscosity super glue in, clamp it up, rasp down more and let in some more wood. I mean people, I think some people don't get it, they wonder why do I spend my time on something like this that's been repaired multiple times. Well it's to see what you can do, learn new skills, find out more about how bows work and the stresses and strains. Uh, when I was a nipper there was a thing on um, children's BBC it was Billy the Bean. Billy the Bean built a machine to see what it would do. He built it out of sticks and stones and lots of pots of glue. Well, it's that sort of philosophy. Let's do something and see how it works, what it does. It obviously made a huge impression on me. Yeah, it also keeps me out of mischief. But there's that old, um, that old saw about uh, a long bow at full draw with seven eighths broken. Well, maybe it's near a nine tenths or whatever. But if you want to learn a lot about bows and you want to make a flight bow or something, a really good bow, it's got to be highly stressed and it needs to be highly stressed along its whole length. There's one very good bowyer who shall remain nameless, but for the sake of argument, we'll call him Mike, who insists I make my bows insufficiently elliptical with too much bend in the middle not enough at the tips he may well be right maybe that's why this failed here but yeah I do it for the fun of it I do it to learn to learn new techniques and all that so anyway let's see what Billy the Bean can do all right here we are after a couple of minutes of careful rasping you can see the earlier repair where there were cracks there that were glued, they've remained sound. And I let in a keel, a curved 
you know, D-shaped section of um, bamboo, but it was all, you know, the the outer layer of the bamboo, sort of edge on, if you like. See, there's another crack there, but um, that obviously stiffened it to some extent, but not enough there. So I intend to get what glue I can into this crack. Maybe flex the bow slightly the wrong way to get it in there. Then try and take this down more to get a good, clean, flat you know, platform, if you like, to put a decent layer of U on and build it up so the riser section is thicker. I don't know if it shows up, but you can see she's probably thickest here and dips down before it swells back up to the riser. So I think there's a weak point there, which is, you know, where it's propagated that crack. But, um, yeah, my original repair seemed to have been very successful. It will have it failed before. See, that's another thing. Well, you keep making bows, they keep failing. Well, they're no bloody good, are they? Ah, but they fail in different places. So, and again, it's that thing about getting the whole bow stressed to the maximum. Well, that bit didn't fail again, so it was actually a good repair. But we found the error. The problem is this thin area here. But if I can get that all good and clean and flat, We'll see. Ain't gonna cost me anything. As I flex it slightly the wrong way, I can see this crack following along the bamboo and coming out this side there. So what I'm gonna do is chisel the bamboo out, which will mean I can open the crack up better, effectively repair the crack, then redo the bamboo, perhaps slightly longer, then flatten it, then put me lamination of you, then put the riser. Tricky chap, this investigative work. I've taken down, using this little chisel from a, a plough plane, little chisel blade, I've removed the bamboo, at least at this end, I haven't gone all the way back, because I can't see any point in destroying what was a good repair. Now, it would be easy to say, well, the problem was the bamboo reinforcement ended too abruptly and that caused a problem. That would be the knee-jerk reaction. But hang on, that bamboo would be in compression, so that shouldn't be a problem. Well, why did the split propagate all the way around? Ah, but it didn't. Because this split, this side, is actually, I don't know if you can see, is very superficial and very shallow. It's just a little whisker. The main split, I don't know if you can see in the crack there, in the down in there, is on that side. There, oh yeah, we can see it here. So if I can open that up a bit with a bit of gentle flexing. Get some glue in there, clamp her up and then carry on with my other repairs. I mean, I might chisel this out, but it's a bit of a fiddle. It's probably only taken me, I don't know, 15 minutes or something. But it's one of those things, obviously a commercial bow, I wouldn't be wasting his time doing like this, because it's almost quicker to make a new bow. And rather than just chucking something in the been, it's much better to try and work out why it failed. I mean, you can't always. And it would be nice if I can keep it going, because it was a, a big old war horse, this thing. It's very smooth, decent cast, very nice for roving. You know, shooting half inch arrows out of it. Um, onwards and upwards. That's it, flooded with super glue. That's low viscosity. Cyanoacrylate and clamped up. I'll leave that for a good while. Now I'll cut a chunk out of a, an off cut of bamboo. You know, I'll buy it as slats like that for backing bows, and it's just an off cut. I'll ground it down on the belt sander to appropriate dimensions. So 
little go go in there. Probably need to whisk them all off. I've used my profile gauge. Push that into the into the cavity to get what shape it needs to be. And you see I've cleaned out the bottom of the cavity. I've removed all the old bamboo keel and all the glue line as well. So that should glue up nicely. Uh, well the other thing for the U that's going to go over there I've got this strip that I've ground down. I'm going to cut it in half and glue the two halves side by side to make a piece long enough to go over there. It'll have a longitudinal line down the middle but that won't matter too much. I've got a nice new coarse belt on my belt sander. It's something silly like 40 grit but it does the job nice and quick. Right, there's me little bit of bamboo that's going to go in there. And there's me two bits of U that are going to get glued together to make the slat. So what I'll do is I'll get those two bits of gluing done and leave them overnight. So that's it glued and clamped. It can wait overnight. And there's me two slats. Got enough thickness there so when it's glued in the morning I'll put it on the belt sander to give a nice clean flat face. This morning that's um, taken off the clamps, cleaned up the new section of bamboo reinforcement. That's my two bits of slat glued together edgewise, cleaned up ready to be glued on, rubber strapping being applied as two layers and you'll see I've got some extra packing stacked like that so that the pressure is applied to the centre and spread across that area as well as just the tips. If you don't have that the rubber strapping just pulls down on on the corners if you like and tends to sort of bow a thin lamination. So that's it after the glue up. I haven't done any cleaning up or anything yet. There's, that's where the arrow pass was. Which gives you an idea how much more fade I can get here. So I can go for a, a longer gentler fade at either end. That's the um, new riser block roughed out ready for glue on. The big advantage of gluing on this layer first was that I could plonk it onto the belt sander like that and get it nice and flat. So I've got two lovely clean flat surfaces to glue together.